welcome to a new episode of the Lovepad slash Workspace series. Today we're making a mobile drawer cabinet to store audio, video and some music gear under the desk. Boom! Hey guys, I want to give you some context on the desk area remodel that I'm making. You probably remember back in 2016 when I built a loft bed slash workspace. Well, I came to a point where leg and back pain had me wanting to try different things. And this is why I'm massively lowering the height of my tabletop so that I can get more comfortable. I only measured 1.51 meters which is way below the average human height. So why should I keep the furniture around me set to an average size when that is most probably damaging my body? Since I'm making this change that involved quite a few modifications that I've saved for a future episode, I might as well make use of the unoccupied lost space on the left side of the desk. So let's get started making a movable drawer cabinet. I created a cutting diagram before diving into cutting some boards to try to make things easier. The material used for this project is Valkramat and is matching the existing desk and shelving system with stairs I built back in 2016. If you want to see those older episodes, I have a playlist with all the project's videos available in the description. Valkramat is similar to MDF but on a high level of quality. It's an evolution of MDF being harder and denser as well as water resistant. And of course, the coolest part is that it is colored throughout and comes in many different colors and thicknesses for you to choose from. I've used this material probably more than anything else on this channel and I never got tired of it. I just love non plain colored surfaces typically with particles visible on them creating visual textures. Okay, so here I was cutting all the pieces needed for the cabinet and in some cases I had to pull out my track saw when the dimensions were too big to fit within the table saw fence range. Besides the carcass components, I also needed to cut three drawer bottoms and three drawer backs out of 16mm Valkramat. So here I've got all the parts needed except for the drawer fronts that will be cut later. I can start putting this cabinet together and for the joinery I'll be using my loose tenon joining machine. So I simply put the bottom and sides together and made 4 pencil marks per side at visually equidistant places that I can then extend with a square. Since the bottom will be positioned in set about 55 millimeters, I trace reference lines using a scrap piece of the same material so I know where to place the base for the machine. This will make sense in your head in a minute. I started by creating the mortises on the ends of the bottom piece. Now for the side panels, I'll be clamping a straight edge right at the line I was talking about before and this way I can bump the machine base right against it and make sure the mortises come out right. The tenons can be inserted and both sides of the cabinet glued to the bottom piece. I clamped everything tightly and let it dry for about 3 hours. The backer piece can now be permanently glued in place as well. Having the top in place, I could then repeat the tracing procedure and make the rest of the mortises. The project was getting heavy, so instead of placing it on the floor, I got myself over the table to keep working. So far all the measurements are correct, but bear in mind that sometimes things can go a little wrong if you mess up the original cuts by a millimeter or even less. 
Sometimes it is preferable to cut some of the crucial pieces a little bigger and then trim them to perfect size as the build is evolving. A nice trick to clamp along the entire edge using only two clamps is to use a bow clamp. You can make your own with just any thick piece of hardwood by simply planing or sanding a shallow arc along the edge. To make the drawers I will be using the Legra box system from Bloom. This system consists in pre-made metal drawer sides, slides and a few small assembly components. It can be configured to have a smooth closing action known as Blue Motion, as well as a click to open feature called Tip On. There are a few colors to choose from, and I went with the darkest to match the dark gray of the cabinet. To prepare the drawer bottoms to receive the sides, we need to make a rabbit along the entire edge, and you can find all the measurements as well as drawer bottom and back dimensions on Legra Box document instructions on their website. In this case, the rabbit needs to be 38mm wide by 8mm deep, and I decided to do this on the table saw. You can also use a router or even a CNC. On the table saw, you can also use a dado blade if you prefer, but I used a method that makes the least amount of dust. At this point, I noticed that the bottom panel was a little bowed towards the front, so I cut a strip of yellow Valkyr mat to straighten it up and glued it flush with the front. Since this part will never be seen, I quickly drove a few screws to clamp it and to also reinforce it. To assemble the drawers, we first need to attach these rear fixing brackets to the right and left edges of the back piece. The small folded parts need to be flush with the top edge. Now it's a matter of screwing the brackets to the yellow pieces. The Legra box sides have an open end and that needs to be positioned towards the front. Now I can just align the rear area of the fixing brackets and snap them in place. Insert the bottom panel and screw it making sure everything is perfectly square. At the back of the box, it is preferable to drive at least one screw in the middle, connecting the bottom to the drawer back to reinforce the overall structure and prevent the bottom from sagging. I'm not sure what I wanted to do here, but let's pretend this never happened. Much better. Now, breeze and repeat. Oh, and also make sure to check if the black sides are flush at the front with the bottom panel. I can start the slides installation and for that I used the Bloom drilling jig. You can still do this just by measuring and following the installation instructions. The slides should have a slight gap below so that they're not sitting over the cabinet bottom. Because I want these drawers to open with a click, the tip-on kit needs to be installed. There are left and right components that are fairly easy to snap in place. Since these drawers are rather large, synchronization rods are necessary to make sure both slides pop out at the same time when you click at the front. They can be cut to size with any saw.
I always cut the drawer fronts towards the end of a project because I prefer to do the full installation and then precisely measure the available space. I square up one side and cut the other end just a millimeter smaller than the width of the cabinet. To connect the fronts to the boxes, front fixing brackets need to be attached at precise spots, so this jig comes in handy as well. The correct spacing of the bottom and side can be easily calculated by consulting the instruction document and will differ from project to project. Punching the correct hole will give me the exact placement to drive screws and attach the brackets. They snap together just like that and you're done. I can finally sand and prepare the cabinet to receive the finish. I gave it three coats of hard wax oil. Once it was dry, I could attach a bunch of office casters that were slightly protruding in order to freely spin, but still be heated enough not to be noticeable. I also took the opportunity to reinforce the front and back glue ups with small angle brackets since these connections don't have any tenons. You can call it done, but obviously I couldn't. I need to complicate it and add more and more features, so I decided to install two sockets to the bottom drawer so I can keep camera battery chargers always ready to go. I'm not great at electrical connections, so I'm not showing in detail what I did here. Although I can tell you that it worked and the studio didn't burst into flames. I wasn't sure if I needed the black boxes at the back, so I installed them, but I'm sure now that you don't need them to embed these into wood. There's no way to properly fasten them to the wood panel, so I ended up hot gluing them from behind. This was my third attempt to correctly solder the wires on this power plug port and it took me a few hours to figure out what was going on. I can now cut a hole in the back of the cabinet to embed the port. The last thing I wanted to do for all the drawers was to line them with felt. Since I will store audio, camera and music equipment here, I don't want the objects sliding and bumping into each other with the opening and closing movement. So I got some 3mm felt and used carpet tape to stick it to the bottom panels. You can also use spray glue if you prefer. Everything is looking great, 
but this top drawer needs some adjustments. I need to lower the left side of the front slightly as well as bring it to the left to be perfectly centered. There are two screws that can be turned one way or another to give you the alignment needed. The plastic caps can finally be snapped into place, giving the drawers an elegant and finished look. The footer strip can be glued in place with a couple spacers to make it flush with the rest of the fronts. And here we have it. I think it turned out pretty good and I love the Valkramat look along with the smooth action of the Legra box tip on blue motion slides. I still need to make dividers for the drawers and optimize this charging station area. On the next episode I will make adjustments and mods to the desk, refinish the tabletop as well as setting up all the gear. I will also have a surprise related to the back wall, so stay tuned for that. A big shout out to all my Patreon members for supporting my work and if you want to support my work too, head over to patreon.com slash gethandstory or visit my online store and grab a t-shirt or woodworking plans. Thanks Valkramat and Bloom Portugal for providing the material needed to complete this project. Thanks for watching everyone and go get your hands dirty! Até já.